The PlayStation 5 Pro review embargo is finally here. Impressions are all over the internet. And one thing I wanted to do is sort of collect a lot of these reviews and just share with you a few snippets from all of the findings online in one succinct video. So let's get in and talk about what the reviewers think right now. So first things first, there have been a ton of unboxings, a lot of looks at this thing. And while I will have a personal unit arriving at the house tomorrow, along with everybody else. So stay tuned for Destin unboxes a console on his YouTube channel <laughs> very soon. There are professional reviewers out there who now have their impressions live. And some of the thoughts are interesting, but let's talk about some of the important findings that we've seen. This is from Austin Evans. Zubitech had some of these stats up. Uh, some of this is just, it's from all over the place. So um, PS4 Pro important findings, now that people have, have their hands on it, include that the drive actually has 1.89 terabytes of usable storage. As you know, consoles need to allocate a certain amount of memory or a certain amount of space to the system OS so that leaves a usable amount of hard drive space, which is great. Obviously, uh, the two terabyte hard drive is a big selling point. Power consumption surprisingly is lower than the PlayStation 5 Slim. I believe that was Austin Evans where I found that sp sp specific statistic. And I'm going to link to his video below where he does this awesome teardown. If you're interested in the internal components, like the fan sizes and such, I will not be doing that with my unit, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so long story short, it is a bit interesting that power consumption is actually lower than the PlayStation 5 Slim and lower than a lot of the competitors out there. So he also discovered that with the Xbox Series X, the new units that just came out. It seems like console manufacturers have figured out a way to make sure that you're utilizing less power with your hardware. So that is a big win for PlayStation. Uh, it does run a little bit loud. The Pro is uh, coming in around 42 decibels. The Slim is 38 decibels and the Xbox Series X is 37 decibels. That again was from Austin Evans who did some testing on his particular unit. And uh, the fact that it's a little bit louder is a bit surprising. A lot of people have commented about the weight. It is apparently much lighter than other units that are out there on the market, including the, the base PlayStation 5. And it's also, it's sort of okay on the heat. It's a little bit cooler. It's only about two degrees cooler than the Slim and the Series X. This is based on Austin Evans testing. So again, Heat wasn't really something we were worried about. He tested, I believe it was F1 to determine the, the heat dissipation of the unit and had some very interesting findings. So good to know that the heat dissipation is good. And one big bonus that I saw in a lot of the, the teardowns was that there's a new CMOS battery slot. This was called out by Digital Foundry, I believe, and a few others. But if your CMOS battery ever goes, you're able to easily replace it. You just unscrew a little thing on the console and you are able to just really quickly pop in a new CMOS battery and get going. But overall, let's talk about some of the review findings because I think that's what you were really curious about. Maybe you haven't pre-ordered one like I did, or maybe you're somebody sitting on the fence thinking $700 is a lot of money. Well, you're right. Basically, everybody said that this is a lot of money for uh, minor improvements, and it's basically for the tech enthusiast. And especially with some of these performance issues, let's get to that in just a second. Let's talk about the reviews. So The Verge gave it an 8 out of 10. I believe Tom Warren handled the review, and he, he was more positive on it. He said, the kind of person who should buy a PlayStation 5 Pro is the kind of person who doesn't want to muck around. They'll want the best console gaming experience money can buy, a large OLED display to go with it, and a plan to park themselves real close to that screen. If you were not like a, a super enthusiast, like the Digital Foundry uh, guys, myself, who's like really into the, the interesting technology going behind it, and you're a bit of a casual, uh, you might not notice a lot of the improvements, which I'm going to get a little bit more into here in just a second. Uh, you might need to like watch a Digital Foundry video to know what value you are getting for your money. And some people would argue that that value is uh, less than you might expect. But Tom Warren, uh, 8 out of 10, or The Verge gave it an 8 out of 10, mostly a, a positive, positive spin on everything. And he talks about, I was actually by so Sean uh, Hollister and uh, re-promoted by, by uh, Tom Warren over there. And 
it's interesting. So it's eight out of 10, but it's a very expensive and negligible gains. Continuing on here, we got Tom Tarwar gave it an eight out of 10. Tech Radar gave it an eight out of 10. So, so mostly positive over there. Games Radar gave it a 7.5 out of 10. And IGN uh, landed right in that seven territory. And it says, this is their social media quote. Obviously you can go check, go check out IGN's full review because I know the team just knocked it out of the park and did a ton of work on it. And uh, they said for $700, you'll need to think twice about whether or not the upgrade of the PlayStation 5 Pro is worth the price tag. So I think that's the thing everybody keeps coming back to. It's very, very expensive. And while you do get games, the base PlayStation 5 handles games quite well and has uh, treated us very well. So it's one of those sort of... um luxury buys so if you have the additional funds and you have the tv to see the improvements and all of the other things that you need to to maximize your uh enjoyment of a very expensive piece of hardware like this then consider it but it is very expensive and gamespot didn't really gamespot uh so they don't score their reviews they just had a, a big form uh, sorry, a big write-up about their impressions. And long story short, their social media post was powerful on paper, ordinary in action. With uh, Tamor uh, Hussein, who actually reviewed it, said, I reviewed the PS5 Pro. You probably don't need one. Getting sort of to that same idea that all of these reviews sort of come to the same con consensus. If you are an enthusiast like I am, somebody who's interested in the gains that you get, then you will probably want to consider this. So you have that, that window of the PlayStation exclusive games that you're going to play looking the best on the console for that year or two years uh, when PlayStation actually starts announcing what their exclusives are going to be. Now, if you're willing to wait and you already have a halfway decent PC, there's not a lot of ton. Of, there's not a ton of reasons to buy the console. And that's sort of where everybody seems to be landing with this. Now, let's talk about the performance, because uh, for the most part, it's undeniably a graphical stunner. If you're talking about visuals and the visual improvement that you get when running at lower frame rates, uh, Whoops, that's the wrong quote box. Uh, Performance-wise, uh, CPU-bound games will still struggle to stay at 60 FPS, but they'll be much better overall experiences. For example, like a game like Elden Ring, it might have ran at 40 on the base PlayStation 5. Now it's like 56 to 60. If you look at the Digital Foundry video, you will see sort of that consensus with the unit. Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, it runs at a higher frame rate, but there's some other issues that arise with Dragon's Dogma or like uh, the new Dragon Age, obviously, looks better but there's uh, some work to be do, do, done there. And optimized games, there's no doubting that they look absolutely phenomenal on the PlayStation 5 Pro. Stuff like uh, Spider-Man that hasn't come to PC. But again, we know Spider-Man 2 has been announced for PC, and that's where you're going to get the best visual experience. But if you're a console enthusiast and you want the best-looking console, uh, like there, there's all these check boxes that you have to have for the pro to work for you. Do you only play on console? Do you have a lot of disposable income? Do you have a television that can support the features? Uh, then go for it, right? You're going to get a great console experience. But if you have the money to either build a PC or upgrade to a PC, that sort of introduces a bit of a, a challenging question that you have to figure out for yourself, whether you end up buying the console for the console experience or you make the jump to PC and you're able to sort of future-proof your gaming. Some of the findings from Digital Foundry here, you can see uh, their frame graphs. They had 51 frames. I believe this is, uh, yeah, this is Devil May Cry. So it was uh, on the base PlayStation 5, you're getting 51. You're getting a 138% boost over on the PlayStation 5 Pro. And on Elden Ring, in quality mode, you were averaging around 43 frames per second. And you're getting 58 frames per second in quality mode. Like I said from the beginning, uh, the PlayStation 5 Pro, you can build a very compelling uh PC unit that is like $800 about, and you can obviously upgrade from there to about a thousand dollars. You have, you should consider that, you know, I'm not saying that you need to buy a PC. I'm not saying you should buy a PC. I'm just saying the bang for your buck is questionable. It, it depends on a lot of variables. So if you are that console gamer who has 
a lot of disposable income and you have all the other things set up for you, then yeah, the PlayStation 5 Pro has a lot of cool stuff going for it. And on top of all that, it does have one cool feature I want to talk about that I'm really excited to see. Uh, image in uh, Enhance image quality mode off and on. We saw this for... Uh, Bloodborne, for example, you can see here, uh, Digital Foundry did a look at Uncharted and uh, you can see that it's definitely improved. It looks a little bit smoother. The, the image quality looks a little bit nicer. And I have to wonder, I haven't watched the full one hour thing, but I think that's a little bit of showing off in terms of what the console is able to do with the PSSR technology. And honestly, it looks quite Good. And you can see that for a lot of other games. There, there's some games where um, I believe this is Cyberpunk. It looks like Cyberpunk off the top of my head. Uh, the pl PlayStation 5 performance mode, it's sort of jumping all over the place. The PS4 performance mode, it's it's quite stable. Uh, and there was, I, I, hopefully I can find the Dragons. There were a lot of comparisons. Go watch the full Digital Foundry video, but I was trying to find one of the CPU bottlenecked games because they kind of discussed it a little bit here um, in terms of what it does and what it doesn't do. But long story short, it's one of those consoles, it's one of those pieces of tech, just like the PlayStation 4 Pro, where you are paying a premium. It's a much larger premium than you would for the PlayStation 4 Pro. And you have to ask yourself, if you want that or not. And uh, based on sales, like it didn't sell out just like the PlayStation 4 didn't sell out. It does seem like it is a niche market and this will increase the PlayStation 5 sell through in terms of console. But I think it's at that price point where it's prohib pro prohibitive in terms of getting new people into the ecosystem. And those were the, the findings from a lot of people. So some pluses, some minuses. It's to me, you know, the IGN review of seven out of 10 seems seems kind of dead on. Maybe you might bump it up to an eight. There was one review I saw for 10 out of 10 from an outlet I didn't recognize, but there are people who really enjoy it. And it is an interesting piece of tech that comes at a, a time when I think we're kind of, I, I don't know about you, but some people might be watching the the wallet, so to speak. Let me know what you think. Are you going to be picking one up? I'm sort of in, indifferent on the whole thing and just console gaming in general, because if you have a good PC, you can get a lot of your gaming needs there. But uh, I do have I have one on the way, so I'll be checking it out in more detail tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to know when my content goes live. I greatly appreciate you watching. Thanks so much. If you want to become a member, you can support the channel right down there. It looks like the memberships. I finally updated the membership screen and... <laughs> Uh, the people that were uh, gifted memberships have sort of evened out. So you can actually see me now on the screen. Click that join button if you want to support the channel. Thank you so much, everybody. I really do appreciate it. And if you want to see my last video where I talked about the Nintendo Switch 2, which is also right around the corner and how backwards compatibility is going to work there, check that out. Bye for now. I'll see you for the next one.